birthday, obviously his birth um, here on, on Christmas. I'm very excited for this morning. I, know, I believe the Lord wants to take us on a journey. So if you want, I don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to jump straight into it. If you want, you can turn with me to Matthew 2. Matthew 2, that's the passage that I want to look at. It's obviously a very well-known passage, um, but I just believe that there's some gems that the Lord wants to give us this, this morning. So Matthew chapter 2 from verse 1, and I'm reading out of the New King James Version, and it says, Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem. So what I want you to see this morning is um, the Bible is talking about wise men that came, you know, from the east, that came to Jerusalem. So how many wise men and wise women do we have here this morning? Okay, just a few, like about 50% wise men and wise women. But what I want you to see this morning is that, that, that you are actually inside of the Christmas story. Um, you are, this morning, you are a wise man and a wise woman, and you are inside of, of this Christmas story. And I just, I just feel like the Lord wants to, to take you back 2,000 years. Um, so just imagine yourself as you sit there, and I'm going to read. Um, you're a wise man. You're a wise woman. You know, and um, and this is what's happening in in your life. Um, verse two says, "They came to Jerusalem, saying, 'Where is he who has been born King of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and have come to worship him.'" So that verse 2 is just so powerful for me. Firstly, they, they, was, they said that we saw his star. It wasn't the Bethlehem star. It was his star. It was the star of Jesus. It was Jesus' star. And they saw the star actually not in Bethlehem initially. They saw the star in the east. And um, what is what is so interesting is like, so these wise men came from the east. Now, Linda has spoken about it before. Um, you know, our, our old stories told us that there were probably three wise men, but that doesn't stand in the Bible. The, the reason why people, people thought it was three wise men was because there was three gifts. Um, but if you just look at the context of the story, you realize that there was probably, the Bible doesn't tell us how many, but there was probably way more than three. Because they created quite a, a commotion in Jerusalem. You know, when these wise men came into Jerusalem, there was quite a commotion that, that happened. But what's interesting is, so, you know, Jesus was born, it says that Jesus was born in Jerusalem, and it was his star that appeared in the east. Now, again, this is not in the Bible, but obviously people have studied this, you know, and scholars have written about this. And people are obviously thinking like, but how would people from the east, wise men from the east, know about the star of Jesus, the star of the Messiah that's coming? How would they know about that? And the, the logical conclusion to make, like I said, there's, there's no, nothing that proves this, but the logical conclusion is it actually came from one of the greatest wise men before that time, and it was the prophet Daniel. So the prophet Daniel was a wise man from the east, <laughs> okay? And um, we know that he was the main wise man for the, for the king, Nebuchadnezzar. And, um, and he prophesied about the coming of the Messiah. And um, so the logical thing to think is that he obviously taught the other wise men about the coming of the Messiah. And, and here are some things to look, look out for. So what's interesting is if you, if you look at the, the whole star, if you go with me to um, Revelations. Now you guys know I love the book of Revelations. Not because it's the revelation of the Antichrist or revelation of whatever, but because it's the revelation of Jesus Christ. It, it's the unveiling of Jesus. So if you want to 
know Jesus in his fullness, you go to the book of Revelation and, um, and you'll see him there. And this is another passage where Jesus is actually revealing himself. Revelation 22, verse 16. So just in verse 13, it says, Jesus says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. This is Jesus speaking. It's in red in the New King James. But in verse 16, again, Jesus is speaking and he says, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. And then he says, I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. So yeah, Jesus comes and he reveals himself as the bright and morning star. Again, confirming what Matthew is writing there. And he says, the, the wise men understood that it is his star. But then Jesus comes in the books of, book of Revelations and he takes it further. And he says, I am the star, the bright and morning star. And it's just so interesting that why does Jesus call himself the morning star? Because he brought a new day. He is the dawn of a new day. And, um, <laughs> and you are there, like I said, as a wise man, as a wise woman. And you are seeing this bright and morning star, which is Jesus. And he is the new day. He is the new day in your life. He is your bright and morning star. Um, and if you, if you look at this, so, so I wanna, I'm going to go a bit further. And the, and the Bible, so I'm going to go back to Matthew, to, the, um, to that passage I was reading. So Matthew 2. So they said, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. So at that stage, they didn't see the star. They just saw the star in the east and they knew that this is Jesus. This is the Messiah. He has been born the king of the Jews. So they went to Jerusalem to go and find him because we all know that Jerusalem was the capital city. And they thought that the king would probably be born there. But what's interesting is they said, we are looking for him. Why did they look for him? So that they can worship him. As you actually go and look at the Greek there, it says, so that we can bow down before him and worship him. And what is, what is Matthew trying to show us here? What is he trying to, to teach us here is that if you are a wise man and a wise woman, you will go and behold him. And you will go and worship Him. That is true wisdom. wisdom. True wisdom is worshiping Jesus. <laughs> true wisdom is beholding Jesus. Going, you know, true wisdom is traveling thousands upon thousands upon thousands of miles. Wherever you need to travel. True wisdom is traveling thousands upon thousands of miles to go and behold Jesus. To go and worship Jesus. And, um, and that's what the, these wise men, who weren't even Jews, is teaching us today. And, and that's the same with you. You know, it's, it's that heart of seeking Him above all else. That heart of, you know, it doesn't matter what happens I'm going to travel, you know. I'm going to go to that conference. I'm going to fly to America. I'm going to fly to, to Israel. We, Linda is having a tour to Israel, you know. <laughs> and uh, we're trusting God that the war is going to just, um, just die down and, 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 and peace. We're releasing peace. Like the angel said, we bring you good tidings of great peace to all men. So we declare that over the nation of Israel again. This morning, like the angel declared that morning, peace to all men, goodwill. What is that word, goodwill? It means the favor of God. So these angels came in Christmas time and they released the favor of God, the blessing of God. I don't know whom of you have ever seen the favor of God operating in, in a person's life. 
but it is supernatural. It is absolutely supernatural. I've seen it in my own life. I've seen it in other people's lives. If the favor of God is operating in your life, nothing can stand in your way. And this is what Jesus came, is he opened up that door for the favor of God to come. And we release that good will, that good message of peace to all men over the nation of Israel. And Linda is taking a tour there. And um, like the wise men, men and women, we're going to travel all the way from South Africa to Bethlehem, <laughs> to Jerusalem, you know, to, to go and behold him. And yes, we know we can behold him right here today as well. And that's what we're going to do, you know. I hope that even as you sit there already, that you are starting to see him, you know, that you're like, yeah, man, I'm, I, I can see that. I can see, like, I'm, I'm coming to behold him. I'm coming to, to worship him. The Bible says, the beginning of wisdom is the fear of God. That word fear means awe, wonder, reference, coming before him in awe and wonder and reference, beholding him. If, if we don't behold him, it's so difficult to walk in the fear of the Lord. <laughs> So that's why these wise men came and they, they behold him. So I want to, um, I'm going to read quickly the rest of, of the story just because it's Christmas, you know. Um, when Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was born. So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for this is what is written by the prophet. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Ju Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Verse 7, Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child, and when you have found him, bring, him back to, bring word back to me, that I might come and worship him also. When they heard the king, they departed, and behold, again, they, came, they went to behold him. It's so beautiful how many times the Christmas story says, behold, behold. What does behold mean? It means, look, you can see him. <laughs> Christmas is the story that God became flesh so that you can see Him, so that you can behold Him. And He says, And behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. And then He says, When they saw the star, Prophetically, obviously, a picture of Jesus, the bright and morning star. When they saw the star, uh, sorry, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. So, what's amazing to me is the angels appear to the shepherds and the angel says, Rejoice. <laughs> and here, the people who are wise, when they saw the star, which is a prophetic picture of Jesus, what did they do? They rejoiced <laughs> with exceedingly joy. Like they, they just, it's, you know, when we read the word joy in the Bible, it doesn't give us the full picture of what these writers was actually trying to say. It's, it's not like, yeah, brother, I'm full of the joy of the Lord today, you know. <laughs> yeah, the joy, the, 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 the joy of the Lord is in my heart, you know. Praise God, hallelujah, bless Him, you know. Uh, that's not the picture, you know. When the Bible says that they rejoiced and they had joy, it's like a picture of like they were like, Woo! they were jumping and dancing and twirling and swinging and going crazy. Like, man, like there's the star. Like, man, they saw the star in the east and all of a sudden on their way to Bethlehem, bam, here's the star. And they're like, Oh my word, this is real, you know, like Jesus is, he has been born, you know, and the star comes and moves to a house. How crazy is that? Have you ever thought about it? Just, just picture this, you know, 
this star wasn't like what we're thinking about up there. And they, were, they had to make calculations, you know, of like, man, is it that house? Is it that house? Like, no, it was so real that all they could do was to rejoice. And I knew that's the house. Bam. It was a supernatural manifestation of who Jesus is that they saw. And they were rejoicing and going crazy. I was just like, man, and they weren't even Jews. Like, I'm just blown away by that, you know? Just like all of us here, we're not Jews. But you can see the star, you know? You can be there in that story. It's, it's your story. You are a wise man and a wise woman. And what does a wise man and a wise woman do? They rejoice. <laughs> unrestrained, unrestricted, extravagant joy. And it's not something that you have to wait for. It's a choice. It's a choice. The word rejoice, what is, what is it? It's a verb. It's a verb. What's it? it's, there's an action to it. It's a choice that you make. It's like, you know what? I don't know what happened in your life and what happened in this year. What, it doesn't matter is when you see the star, the bright and morning star, Jesus himself, you can choose to rejoice because he is worthy of it all. He is extravagantly beautiful. So it goes on. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. It was like... <laughs> They fell down to their faces and they worshipped him. They didn't just come and bring gifts, you know. So, and then it goes on. Um, they fell down and worshipped him. That's why they went, you know, is, is to worship him. This was the main purpose of, of seeking him. Uh, and when they found him, their first response was to fall down and worship <laughs> I mean, and this wasn't like a quick thing. I think it was probably like at least an hour, you know. They were just like prostrate in front of this child because they had a revelation of who this child is. They had a revelation that this is the bright and morning star. This is the king of the Jews, but not just the king of the Jews, the king of the universe. And they were probably there on the floor for an hour, just worshiping him, worshiping this baby. You can just imagine, like, just see yourself there, you know, in that manger, on the floor, you know, worshiping him. And Mary is looking at you like, man, what is wrong with this person? You know, like, what? I, I mean, she didn't have context at that stage, you know, that this child of her, I mean, she had that prophecy of the angel, but we know that she didn't understand fully, you know, what was happening here? So obviously she was like, so Mary is looking at you like, what is wrong with you? You know, why are you falling down? <laughs> you know, what, what is wrong? Why are you worshiping so extravagantly? And it's so often the case with all of us, you know. You are worshiping Jesus of everything you have and the world and people out there is looking at you and like, man, you're out of your mind. What is wrong with you? Why are you so in love with Jesus? But you know that that is wisdom. <laughs> you know that is wisdom. is to lie down, fall down on your face, and worship Him with everything that you have. And that is what they did. And what was... <laughs> and then it goes on and it says, And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to Him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So what is the, and I, I don't want to do an offering message because Sarah already done it, but I just want to point this to, what is the natural response to true worship is you open up your treasuries and you start to give to Him. You know, that is the natural response because true worship is total surrender. It is giving everything that you have, all my money, all my assets, everything that I have, all my energy, everything that I have, I'm going to give to Him that is true worship, and this is what this wise man did. They understood what wisdom is to give to him everything that I have, all my treasures, all my wealth, my gold, frankincense, like, and it says plural, like this was abundance. 
These gifts that they gave here to Jesus sustained Jesus' family. They, trip, they could travel to Egypt, you know, be there, live there, travel back because of these gifts that was given to Jesus, you know. It sustained Jesus and his family for many, 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 many years. If you understand how much, how much was the cost of these gifts, Today we like frankincense and myrrh. Oh, what? What is that? You know what? That's not gold. Yes, gold, gold. But frankincense and myrrh in those days were worth more than gold. But I don't want to go in, into those things. That's not really what. But here's what I want to end off with because I think, oh, my time. Verse twelve. Then, being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed from their own country another way. What I feel the Lord is saying to you this morning is take note of your dreams. I just believe there's a prophetic word that the Lord is giving to you this morning is that He is going to give you divine dreams in this season that's coming. I prophesy this over your life. He's going to give you divine dreams. He's going to give you divine direction, just like he gave to the wise men. He's going to give you the divine direction, and he's going to give you divine warnings. And wisdom would be to honor the dreams that you give, that you get. So here's how it works. If the Lord gives you a dream, and you're like, ah, I don't know, like, um, I think it's from the Lord, but, you know, I'm not sure, and like, I'm just going to carry on with my life. He's probably not going to give you another one. Why? Because you didn't steward the dream that He's given you well. But if you take the, the, the first dream that He's given you, and you write it down, and you go and, you know, pray about it, and ask Him, Lord, what are you saying to me? And you, you go and just, you know, search about it a bit, and think about it a bit, or whatever, He's going to give you more. And I just feel like the Lord is saying to us, to steward your dreams well. Because He wants to give you more. He wants to give you more dreams. And He wants to direct you and give you the one one. It's like He did here with, with the wise men. And they heeded the dream that they got. I mean, I, in those days, you know, I don't know if these guys even knew about prophetic dreams, you know. But they got a dream and they knew, okay, I'm going to heed this and I'm going to do this. Okay, so that was just like an extra prophetic word. But what I want to end off with is, um, is in, and I'm, I'm going to do it very quick, but it's in Philippians 2. And I'm going to read Philippians 2 out of the NIV. We all know the NIV, the New International Version, quite well. Um, I'm going to read from verse 14. <laughs> so Philippians 2 verse 14. It says, Do everything without grumbling or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure children of God, without fault in a warped and crooked generation. So he says like, let's not complain, let's not fight. You know, it's just, he says, let's leave the, the, the complaining, let's leave the fighting, so that you can be pure children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. You know, it's like when someone is like critical and always looking for fault and complaining and grumbling, you know, it's, it's not cool. You know, it's not like, it's not fun to be around people like that. And Paul is saying, let's not be like that. But then again, and he says, then, when? When you stop blaming and fighting, he says, then you will shine among them like stars in the sky. The end of verse 15. Then you will shine amongst them like stars in the sky. So, what I feel the Lord is saying for us for today for Christmas is, Jesus, that, that star is Jesus, the bright and morning star. It's literally like heaven, when Jesus was born, heaven invaded this earth. You know, because Jesus is heaven. So Jesus was born, heaven invaded this earth. He is the bright and morning star. And as we come and worship Him and behold Him, you know, and just look at Him, what happens is that we 
the NIV says like, you become a star. <laughs> this is not what I'm saying. This is what the Bible is saying. I'm going to read it to you again. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky. So as you behold the bright and morning star, Jesus himself, the Bible says, your eyes are the lamp of your body. And if your eyes are fixed on him, talking about you are seeing him, you are beholding him, then you, your body becomes a lamp. And you become a bright, shining star. And, um, and like I said, each and every one of you are wise men and, and wise women. And I just want you to just... Let's just, let just all stand. Let's just stand. I'm going to end off for us. <laughs> all you beautiful stars. So I just want you to, to close your eyes. And like I said, you are a wise man and a wise woman. And you are there. <laughs> And Lord, I just pray for every single...